What's up, family? It's your boy, Daniel James II. I'm your host right here on Black Voices on the Hill. Black Voices on the Hill is a podcast and radio show for the culture. We center Black lives, amplify Black stories, and enhance the Black experience at Cornell University, Greater Ithaca, and beyond. Black Voices on the Hill topics range from racism, police brutality, colorism, sexism, to Greek life, leadership, and white elitism in the Ivy League. Black Voice on the Hill envisions a Cornell that is sensitive to the plight of its Black students, aware of the Black excellence in its college town, and unabashed about them changing the world. We see Black excellence at Cornell. We believe in Black empowerment, and we love the Black experience. Listen, we're brought to you by WVBR News. To see when more new and upcoming episodes for other Cornell and Ithaca News, be sure to follow us at Black Voices on the Hill on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Visit us at our website at wvbr.com slash Black Voices. Subscribe to us on all podcast platforms, wherever your pods are casted, y'all. Tell Alexa you want to listen to Black Voice on the Hill. Tune in right here on WVBR 93.5 FM every Friday. And the episode releases on podcast and now YouTube every week on Tuesdays. Listen, I have a very special guest in the studio today. Um, Alina, since your audio is better now, you don't even have to mute yourself. Uh, but listen, uh, <laughs> Alina, I have, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm letting the cap back too quick. I have fashion designer. I got, you know, <laughs> business owner. I have a Cornell student. I have a, just an amazing black woman. Uh, and, and recent Wheel of Fortune guest. Uh, she was on national TV, millions of people watching her. I have none other than Miss Alina Reed. Alina, what's up? Oh, thank you. That was such an amazing intro. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Doing very well because we're talking right now. Now, I know it's uh, it's like a solid 1 p.m on the uh west coast what's yeah. it like what you've been doing uh, you know it's actually it's a really gloomy day today so i'm definitely gonna be more inside but fridays are a super chill day i don't have any classes so i'll be chilling all day on friday it's relaxing <laughs> relaxing not me yeah. too uh i was watching some murder she wrote i don't know if you know what murder she wrote is it's like a it's like an 80s show. It's all right if you don't know what it is. But it's like a, it's like a murder sleuth show uh, that I love watching. It's, it's like a seacoast show. So it's really, really cool. Um, no, yeah. I've never heard of it. But I do love a good murder docuseries. So I'm mm -hmm. like this. You know, like the Ted Bundy murder, you know, like. The <laughs> I just, that's funny because I, I, I have Hulu now. And I just watched the Menendez brothers. It's kind of sad. It's kind of uh, sad. They normally are super sad. I just, they're so interesting to me. I'm just like, how does a person go from like A to B? Like you start off normal. How do you get here? <laughs> it's just so interesting. I eat them up and then have nightmares later. <laughs> sound like you need to be a psychiatrist or something like that. I would be so sad. I'm too empathetic. I'm too emotional. I'd be like, I just, I I'm, I'm sorry you're going through this. You know, you can't do that if you're <laughs> sick. <laughs> Right. Speaking of just going through it in terms of emotions, I want to just ask too about your personal wellness and just health to start off because like uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, there's a lot going on on our campus uh, in the past, you know, two weeks or so um, with the student yeah. uh, death. Um, rest in peace, Sean West. Uh, and then there's just a lot that's been going on in terms of the world. We thought we had some light at the end of the tunnel with the conviction of George Floyd's murder. And, and then, of course, within the self same hour, we lose another uh, Black person, a Black girl, uh, 15 years old, at the hands of police. So there's just a lot going on, Miss uh, Makaya Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, how are you? Let's start with there. How are you? I feel like that's such a, it's a really good, also loaded question. Like there's so many layers to that to address. Um, uh, personally, um, I, I try to really limit my social media time. So um, on the day of George, um, on the day of the trial, um, I, I did, 
I did go on social media just to kind of see other people's reactions and stuff and see, um, of course, what was going on in regards to that. So it was very unfortunate as I was going through people's posts to see that um, Makaya had also passed away. I was like, this is not really, I was looking for a little more joy, a little more like happy times. Okay, I'm glad that this um, this verdict has been decided, but um, yeah, it's just, there's so much, there's so much happening in the world. Um, I guess for me, um, I grew up in, I grew up, or I grew up <laughs> in a very, um, strong Christian household. So that's just really what I rely on. You know, I had to throw that, I threw that out for you. Thank you. <laughs> um so for me that's like really what I kind of base my um what I base the direction of the world on and just how I get through my days and stuff just making sure I'm staying constantly connected with God um it's just sad (laughs) it's just sad um and like I was sharing just like a few moments ago I am extremely emotional and empathetic to things like this so for me being on social media and just seeing these things constantly happening like it's really a wrong damper on my day um so that's why I try to like take a break even when it comes to reposting and stuff I saw this wonderful post um and it was saying that like if you are a black creator if you see a black person on your social media not constantly reposting these things like leave them alone and for me like that hit so hard I'm so sorry that is so hard because I was like you know I, I don't like to repost this stuff I want people to look at my page and be like she has some nice flowers going on or something it's so sad so um I just really try to take a break and take care of myself um making sure I do the things that um, I love and hanging out with the people that I love it's so hard in the middle of the pandemic of course um but you know I feel like as the things with the vaccinations proceed then we'll be able to connect with one another more um so yeah, just trying to keep my chin up, keep a positive perspective. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something, Melina. You you spoke about fool right there because I'm I am so tired. You know, people think I don't know who they think operates these like robots. No, they're like real people behind these pages, and oftentimes it's one person. Okay, so you see black boys on it. I mean, I literally just switched over from my personal to this one and back and forth all day, you know, and and not only those two accounts, I'm over like total five. And the thing is, like, my thing is, is that sometimes you need a moment to process and I, I shouldn't be expected to have 20 dashes on my story, just because the news story just dropped, like, you know, I connected to real life get that even with like yellow the sun like these past I don't think I post I think I posted something a few days ago but like for the past like two weeks um I'll be really constant I would typically be really constant with posting every day but I'm just like I don't I don't want to be on Instagram today whether it has to do with like my business or um with my personal page I'm not over here running a big billion dollar company so I'm not tweaking if I <laughs> Be on Instagram today. Y'all know where I'm at. You can go ahead and find me or you can text me. <laughs> so um, but yeah, we just all need a break sometimes. Um, and personally, too, one thing that especially in tying with my design, um, that I push is I'm not an activist. And I think it's okay to be black and to not be an activist. You don't have to be. You can just be be black. Being black is already hard enough. Sometimes I don't want to have to go around telling my story to everybody every day. I just want to be black and get through the day's trials that that comes with. So, (sighs) yes, but positivity. (laughs) That's what I'm focused on. (laughs) Yo, Alina got up this morning. She said, I'm about to just hit you, hit you with this one. Uh, I can be black and not be act they don't equal they're not synonymous jesus christ um i don't have to do that and i feel like um there is a way there is a responsibility already that you feel as a black person to make people aware of what's going on with our culture and you know but sometimes you need time to de-stress and that's why i'm very you know even with this platform people think automatically like um you see an article written or even when i first started it and people put activists so quick i was like uh I don't think I've earned that, number one. <laughs> number two, I said, just because I've created a, a authentic Black space where we can talk about activism and that does not mean 
that I'm getting ready to take on the emotional strain of all movements all the time because mm -hmm. no black person, no matter even the ones who founded BLM or mm -hmm. whatever the movement might be should have to do that. I 100% agree. I think like even forcing that title on people that can be so stressful and traumatic in itself. Like why should, we shouldn't even have to be in this position but just forcing that onto black people in general. <laughs> I'm just so sick. I cannot stand when I see that stuff. Like, if you're not talking about it, if I'm not talking about it, why? You talk about it then. <laughs> you talk about, of yeah. course, I guess for me, that's not to say that, like, if I see injustice being done, I'm just going to be like, well, you know, today ain't the day. And we're just going right. to go walk by it. Right. That's not at all what I'm saying. But it doesn't have to, like, it doesn't have to be something you preach consistently all the time. That doesn't have to be you. Just be your mm -hmm. best friend, so. Absolutely. Your best black self. I absolutely love that. And, <laughs> and, and being and posting 20 times does not the only type of activism make, uh, nor does it make you more black. So I agree with that. Um, <laughs> Alina, listen, you already talked about, you sort of touched on it, talking about your faith in God and the ways in which that has brought you through. Yeah. Um, I think about so many actual verses of scripture that have to do with mental health whether it's uh let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus whether it's you know, peace of god letting it rule in your heart uh, i just i think there's so much there so talk a little bit like more just about um your upbringing i want to know about your upbringing and uh and where you're from and you can talk about spiritual heritage and that type of thing um as well because that's also a part of who you are but just, yeah, where are you from? Where is, where's Alina Reed? Where's this flower from? Um, so I was actually, I was born and raised in Covina, California. Um, for anybody who doesn't know California geography, it's about, about 20 minutes from LA. Um, I guess that's at 3 a.m. with no traffic. So with traffic, about 45 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up, uh, my church home is based in Carson, um, so the church is called Peace Apostolic. Um, Apostolic too, crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I grew up there. Um, that, I've been to that church since I was born. Um, I, I think, in, and it's been really difficult um, in this past few months, just because with the passing of my pastor in early January, um, so I just, it's been such a journey for these past few months um, because when you grow up with somebody consistently, you know, even when you're like three or four, it's not like I was sitting there paying attention or anything, but like, mm -hmm. I knew his face. And so just growing up and stuff and having him really preach a word to my heart, the passing of him, um, while it was wonderful because I know where he's gone, it was so sad just because um, with everything going on, I crave consistency and I was just like such a big wrench thrown. Um, but I really thank God for just giving me and showing me a different, um, I guess with this, um, I've grown a lot because I've had to really reach out and find my own sources in order for me to maintain that connection and just constantly feeding myself. So I thank God for opening so many avenues for me um, so that I could stay connected with like different preachers and trying to connect with different groups and like even different people it can be so hard to find people <laughs> who just have the same mindset um as me um but just constantly growing um so yeah I think that's a little bit about me um I guess my my dad is a minister so it's really nice to have those conversations with him um it's kind of weird when you know you look at your parent and you're like you're kind of my friend you know <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about that stuff me being an adult so it's nice to have him to um, rely on especially when things are constantly shifting and I guess that kind of can tie back to just things that have been going on in the world because it can be really depressing um <laughs> to see everything that's going on and um I know being a Christian and just having the desire to serve others but feeling exhausted you're like I <laughs> what is mine <laughs> what am I gonna do for you <laughs> there's just so much happening um so I just really try to take time and connect with my friends and check and see how people are doing. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a little more spiritual and life background. Um, yeah. No, listen, Alina's just bringing peace. If you could just feel like what I feel on this show, right? Like, oh my goodness. Like, what the world? <laughs> There's so what? 
Stop God, it. you just feel the, the rays of just sunshine. Man, I need some of that. Listen, I had Paul Russell on here the other week, and we were talking about those, uh, those you know, California rays. They do something different. Y'all, y'all got some different vitamins over there. You know? Oh, so, my um, goodness. So yeah, it's just it's so much peace just coming through this. Listen, so you talk about, you know, just the church background. Listen, your interests uh, were not always looked upon favorably in terms of just uh, – fashion design or or what's your major it's called fiber science and that's right that's right so and, and you are such i mean you have to wear clothes but it just wasn't always something that people not just in church but even in the world just thought of as something that you can go into listen and that's mm -hmm. why cornell is so unique in terms yeah. of there being for every person from every study exactly. so tell us about how you got to cornell and then just you know, Alina, why, 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 why major in this? You know, <laughs> I, I, I know somebody told you like, just keep it as a side passion. Don't make that your your major. Why? What you gonna major in that for? You gonna get you need to get a job. You know that type of thing. So tell us, tell us about that mindset and deciding. No, I'm going full force with this. Yes, you know they did. Um, so I think what I think what a lot of people don't know is that I'm a transfer student. So I came to Cornell last year. Yeah, um, I originally when I graduated, um, I got into Howard. You know, go Bison's all that. I feel like it's wrong to say HU since I'm not a real student. <laughs> go ahead, say it. Say it. My friend go, hey, HU. <laughs> Um, but I got into Howard and Howard was the only school that I got into when I was applying for colleges. And I was like, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Um, and I think too, when you're a hardworking student, you know, when your life path gets like totally thrown off course, the world looks dark in your life. <laughs> I'm a loser. What am I supposed to do now? It was so sad for me my senior year. Um, but my mom, she told me, she was like, you know, like if you go to community college, pride just right in the way. I'm like, I can't go to community college. Do you know who I am? Like, do you know what people are gonna think about me? Um, but she was like, you can go for a year and find a college that you truly feel like you will fit in and belong to. Um, and that would help elevate you for the type of person you want to be in life, which is amazing. <laughs> so I went and I shuffled my feet to community college so sad. Um, I think that was probably one of the huge steps in my spiritual growth. I guess, you know, when you go to church, it can be easy to like listen to everything that's being preached and um, not really apply it to your life, especially because there's a lot of older people that are like, what well, God brought me out of. And you're like, I've been here all my life. I ain't been brought out of nothing. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> but yeah. this situation, like I, it, I was really heavily relying on God because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, what am I supposed to do at community college? People get trapped at community college. Like you go and then you get your end up, like you end up staying there for like six years. And I was like, couldn't be me. So <laughs> when I got there, um, I had a friend tell me about the fashion program at Cornell and she had known that I had um, designed my prom dress that year so she was like I know you love fashion you love drawing like why don't you check out Cornell's fashion program um because doing fashion at Ivy League would be astounding like there's so many different avenues that I could take especially with Cornell's um, fiber science program focused a lot on the science direction and I low-key love chemistry so um I was like okay like this would be an interesting route um so I took it and um, I worked my butt off at community college. I, oh my gosh, I worked so hard, way harder than I work now. Um, <laughs> and I managed to apply and I got in. Um, I was so excited. So that means last year was my first year at Cornell. Um, and I had such an amazing time meeting so many awesome people and stuff before we got tossed in the wind of the pandemic. Um, so that's how I got here. Um, I guess in regards to the people that were telling me like, no, don't do fashion. When I was proposing other schools that I was going to study fashion at, they were like, um, no, like you can't go there. <laughs> but when I started to say like, I'm going to do fashion at Cornell, you know, it's kind of like, um, maybe that's not what you should do. <laughs> situation. Um, and I think that the more that I grow and learn about what it means to work in the world of fashion, um, I guess there are older people who I look who would look at it and be like, 
kind of vain, you know, like you want to focus on clothing or maybe it's something super girly, it's something only like little girls who want to do dress up do. Uh, but being in fashion is so powerful because you wear clothes every day. Like people wear clothes every day. People, um, powerful people choose a certain items of clothing that they wear to convey a message. Fashion really dictates how people, how you are perceived, how others are perceived. It, it creates, it, create such a large message that I think people don't really understand um so for me having that like control or being able to be one of those change makers um with the things that I wear that was really important to me growing up um it's important to me now and um yeah I think that's how I got here <laughs> goodness gracious no the you said a whole mouthful listen I could see you I see you designing for 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 Michelle, you know, Lavon. I see you. I see you. But doing tell him. Call me Michelle. <laughs> I see you doing it. I see you doing it. It's a powerful story you talked about uh too at the beginning of that community college journey. Listen, sometimes that that scripture, that that word, that uh it doesn't hit right until you you've been through some things. Um until you've been through some things, you know. Yes it's just true it like it makes it puts character um, yeah. and sometimes and that produces hope as well and uh, so uh, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you made it here too and that you're doing what you're doing so uh, Thank you. <laughs> so this is what I want to do because you've been on Wheel of Fortune and uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to pull up this game. We, we had downloaded the game. I said, we're going to do a game. We've never done this on the show before. But listen, it's called For the Culture, okay? It's heads up. So y'all not, unless I release this part as a clip or, well, I guess when it goes on YouTube, you'll see us playing the game fully. But those who listen via podcast, I would do the Black History uh, <laughs> segment. This is about to be fun. Oh, I'm going to do the Black History segment. But the thing is, the thing is, I have my camera on y'all. So I'm gonna have to like close my eyes or something while while I have the heads up. And Ooh. she's gonna let me know. I know it's true, right? Close my eyes, <laughs> walking truly by faith. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna do my first one. Okay. All right, it's called Heads Up. It's for the culture. Make sure y'all go on the app store and get it, okay? <laughs> oh, the back of the bus. She's in the back of the bus. Rosa. Yes. Um, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. Period. Um, they was in the school, there was a certain amount of them, they got booed. Oh um, um, um they, it was in, I think it was in Arkansas. No, 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 I don't know if it, it was in Arkansas. It was in Arkansas. Um, they were, it was, they, they were the first group to do this. Um, I think like one or two of them, they're Freedom? still alive. Freedom writing. Uh, Oh no, they were students. They were students. Oh, Jesus. Um, they were students. They were up in the school. Everybody was like, boo, get out of our school. We don't want y'all here. No. Uh, oh, my gosh. Is it a new one? Uh, uh, no, no, no. It, this real old. When you said, is it a new one? <laughs> okay, a new, I'm talking about, is it, is it, does it go to the next thing? <laughs> um, it was a group of them. It was, <laughs> it's over. Oh, my it's goodness. Over. It was a little rock. Alina, I forgot I could just pass. What's the next oh, one? Oh, right. Oh, my God, right. Okay, it's your turn. I got two. I got Rosa Parks and Ferguson. It's your turn. Yeah, it was a Little Rock Nine. I hope I wasn't all Little the way Rock up. Nine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Little Rock Nine, they were riding... They rode. They, they rode. Uh, the the bus. They were. They were a, a group of kids. Right. They, tried, they tried to get. Yeah, train. Uh, right. Train. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was student. It was a group of students. Got it. Students. They got booed. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm See sorry. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin you. So All you're right, gonna cool. be big screen for now for me. So I can't really see myself. I'm gonna move okay, myself cool. to the side. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ooh, I don't know who that is. Pass. No, other way, other way, other way. Other way? Down. Do it a little bit harder. All right. I didn't got the point. Ooh, I saw the group. Afro, woman, beautiful activist, big Afro, older, glasses. Uh, she was, she's from California too. Come on. Uh, come on. I have a dream. Martin. Yes. Hey, <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, back of the bus. She sat at the back of the bus. Uh, Rosa, Rosa. Yeah, Rosa, yes. 
<laughs> this was a period in time that represented uh, new arts, new art forms, new black music. It was in New York, uh, a specific Whoa, city in New York. Uh, it was Harlem, Harlem, right? Harlem. Harlem. Uh, the Harlem uh, what? The, the the Harlem Shake. I, the Harlem <laughs> no, it's a period of time. The Renaissance. Harlem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. We. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. She got way more than me. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. I only got. I knew it was Angela Davis. I should have said it. I was like, oh, Angela Davis. Now nah, we gonna go. <laughs> ain't, she from, ain't she from California? What part? I have no idea. She is, yeah, I know she's from California. You should see. <laughs> Afro, I was like Angela Davis, but if it was wrong, I was gonna just be ashamed. You, you know, knew you knew her. Okay, so that's y'all yeah. see that. So <laughs> Alina, Alina always wins. She wins these types of things. So then tell us, tell us how uh, going on Wheel of Fortune. First of all, I just want to acknowledge that Vanna White uh, is from uh, Myrtle Beach, you know South Carolina. Yes, yeah, she's. From oh, she Myrtle is. Yeah, she's from an hour away from where I'm from. So that's that's ours. That's our girl right there. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> and of course, you met Pat Sajak. Why Wheel of Fortune? Because, you know, Wheel of Fortune is kind of hard. I like Jeopardy better. But why Wheel of Fortune? I, yes, I think I think Wheel of Fortune is harder than Jeopardy. Yes. If I went on, I think Jeopardy, you have to be so smart to be on Jeopardy. If you were on Jeopardy, I would be astonished. Like, go. <laughs> did it um will of fortune actually um i so i knew it was based in california in the sony studio um and on the loan since the show already aired and they can't take my money no more um my friend, <laughs> my friend uh he attends howard i we've been friends since high school he applied for it and he got an interview and so he was like oh you know like i got this interview for will of fortune like i'm about to go and win some money and then i said you think if you get on i can't get on watch and see watch and see so I went and I submitted my application and I did this super energetic video and the next day they called me so <laughs> the next day they called me and they were like we want you I know you do I know you do exactly. <laughs> so they were like we have one more spot to fill and we would really love if you could audition to be on the show um, I did the audition. It was so hard. I totally did not do well, but apparently no one else did either. Um, I guess to give a little more context. So for the audition, they have you play like mock Wheel of Fortune games, um, but it's not at all like the show. So they'll show you um, like some words and they'll put maybe like two letters in it and they want you to guess what it is. Yeah, like two letters for real. Like it can be anything. Yeah, it was hard. I left. So very talk about. <laughs> mm -mm. No, I couldn't do that. Yeah, but I guess because they like my enthusiasm and personality, like they chose me to be on the show. So it's like, okay. Um, and I guess I went on more because it was more of like, a, you think you're really going to get chosen? And I was like, yes, I am. Like I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I got, that's kind of how I got there. Um, but I have a Will of Fortune board game and we would always like watch it and stuff at home. So I was like, you know, like, I can't really spell that good, but I think I could really try to finesse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got chosen. I just binge watched a bunch of games and played a bunch of games on my iPad and phone for the following weeks. Um, and when I went, I felt so ready. So yeah, <laughs> that's, I guess that's why. Goodness gracious. No, I love that so much. No, I had a Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I had a, the game, the board game growing up too. Yes, it was, it was serious. It was real. It was cool. They need to make a better one because I think the one they have now, you got to try to lift up the little green things and stuff. It just, <laughs> it's all, we need new technology. <laughs> no, I feel you. So how was, so you talk about getting onto the show. Yes. So you, you get there because mm -hmm. we sort of just found out that you were just sort of like, just watch me April 16th. It's already aired y'all, but it's going to be on, it's going to be on Netflix one day. Cause I think they got the, they got the wheel of fortune. They have wheel of fortune on Netflix. Now you didn't even think about that. Did you, you're going to be famous. You're going to be famous. So I said, <laughs> you're already famous. So talk about the experience of just being on the show. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and it's, but it's different, right? Cause COVID, yeah. Empty studio, right? 
Yes. So actually what they do for the crowds now, they film several days um, in one day. So several shows in one day. Um, So my friend and I were like there together all day. We had to pretend we didn't know each other for a little bit. (laughs) Um, But it was so fun. So they use the contestants as the crowd now. So like the cheering that you hear in the back while they also add like a little bit of additional audio. That's also us screaming. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it was crazy. They were like, you guys need to be loud. So, you know, whenever some, like, for example, if somebody has the option to choose, like, between the $10,000, like I did. So, <laughs> you know, it's like either one side is bank <laughs> or one side is $10,000. Um, so they always want you to yell and scream, like, pick it up, pick it up. And they're like, you have to be loud and ridiculous. Um, but that was fun. It was weird with COVID. We had to stay separate and stuff at all times. Um, we got tested the day before um before the show and like early morning um and it was a rapid test so yeah so we were ready for the next day they had us all separate when it was time for lunch and stuff they did feed us bless their hearts because I was really hungry Uh, (laughs) so that was cool and we had to use these little like white prong things when spinning the wheel instead of just your bare hands with which is what they did in the past um but it was really nice I felt really connected to the group of people that I was with Um, and we just had a really good time it was so fun it was a long day but it was a fun day so I saw you um on from some clips because I haven't been able to to watch it but I I saw some I saw oh my goodness Mm. don't be mad see I wasn't even going to admit that I was going to play but I decided I was going to be honest Mm. okay I I appreciate it (laughs) but I saw clips I saw like parts and I guess I saw you solve like some puzzles but tell Mm. us like as far as because this is good because I don't even know preemptively what to expect but what, what were sort of the outcomes and what were some of the things you were really like, ah, did you, did you make it the, the yes. final thing or what happened? Yeah. So tell but, us. All right. I'll give you a little rundown since, you know, you didn't want to watch me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel, they had me in the first half. <laughs> they had me in the first half. Every time I spun in the beginning, I got bankrupt every time. I think it was like two or three spins in a row. I had bankrupt. So of course I was like, Laura, why did you even put me on this show? <laughs> like because you know for me like I was spinning it and that's it's not like I didn't get a letter like that was completely out of my control so I'm like Lord you gonna put this wheel to bankrupt like I shouldn't be here then what am I doing here so I was really I I was really trying not to pray on these other people's downfalls I was just like okay (laughs) for a reason you put me on the show for a reason like I need to show up (laughs) So I got the first toss up puzzle, which is like what they do in the very beginning. You hold a clicker and they um slowly have letters appear. So I got the first one. So that oh, was you cool. thought you thought you was going, oh, you about to boss up on these oh, people. Right. 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 So when I got the first one, I was like, you can't touch me. I'm ready. I'm here to win. It was all downhill. <laughs> oh no. So the first two puzzles, um, the other two players managed to solve. Now I did get the third one, which is the prize puzzle. So that one has a trip attached to it. So I got that one and I got a trip to Antigua. Let's go. All right. Let's go. So what you, what you need to do is you need to go back and you need to see that clip because I got a trip to Antigua. And, I'm like, <laughs> 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 and the funny thing was after Pat, was like, I see you did this new little dance. He says it this hard. No, he doesn't. No, no. And then he was like, with his own. (laughs) Come to church. Just come come to church. We need to bring you to the church to cook out something. We need to bring you somewhere. It's all right. It's all right, Pat. My family. Pat Pat, Pat got the Holy Ghost. That's all right, right, Pat. That's all right, Pat. Cut it, cut it, cut it, Pat, <laughs> cut it. So that's awesome to know. I'm so glad that you got something because that's just amazing. Listen, any write another story about that? She got a trip to Antigua, Cornell Sun. Somebody write that too. Yeah, she got a trip. I love that. So who are you gonna take? <laughs> So I don't know yet. I was actually supposed to submit some dates like two weeks ago. Um, it's so hard, you know, because people are like, you won't take me, you won't take me. 
Um, I did talk, to, I have an older sister, she's 32. Um, so I was thinking about taking her, but I don't know how that's gonna work out. So it might be me and my mom rocking to the trip. Yeah, your mom rocking to the trip. Okay, I like that. Cool. That's so dope. And Antigua is such a beautiful place too. So I know um, you're going Yeah. Huh? No, I've I've never been there. I- <laughs> <laughs> never been either ironically though that's how come I knew this trip was really for me because I was planning to go to Antigua already um so I was like yes that's why when he said it too like I was just too excited because I was like that's good (laughs) you know I was saving up to go to Antigua already just gonna go ahead and give me a free trip that's awesome oh see that's awesome see that's how you know it's God's will right there um (laughs) Yeah. See, I was just saying it's beautiful from, from the pictures, you know, Google images, Google search, you know, things like that. So now nah, I've never been. I would love to go. You know, maybe I'll hit that up for my my 21 this year, you know, 21. Yeah. Oh, my God, is your birthday? July 11th. Oh, um, I'm November. So I was like, oh, that's but No, you too early. So. Well, you can come. We can hop on the trip together. It'll be just you and me. <laughs> what day? November. Uh, November 20th. Oh, my mom's November 3rd. OK, cool. Wow. It's pretty dope. Uh, so you talked about that. So this is the Wheel of Fortune, girl, y'all. So I want to ask you, before we close out, just tell us, uh, well, first of all, yeah, when, do, when you graduate, what are the next steps? You know, you going to, you know, work in France, uh, uh, you know, Patty, you know, are you going, you know, to Europe? Or are you going uh, to Antigua? Where are you? Where Or do you just want to continue with um no before I ask you what you're gonna do next tell us a little bit more about you know, I was gonna end with talking about yellow the sun but I want you to talk about that right now yeah let's talk about yellow the sun how that came about and all of that yeah um so I spent the whole year um, my whole junior year at home so that was just um I just really needed something for me to keep myself busy and just kind of focus um, besides the fact that I wasn't seeing my friends and stuff. So I created Yellow of the Sun in spite of everything that was going on. I just really wanted to create clothing that reflected my own thoughts about letting the sun shine despite any situation. Um, so that's how come there's three funds. Um, so when you purchase like a, a what do I say? When you purchase a set, <laughs> you little card that I provide and it just talks about like keeping your keeping your head up and like remembering to let the suns on your chest keep a positive mindset and that the sun is constantly shining so if it's not shining outside which it's never shining in Ithaca um you have suns on your chest to shine suns on your chest to shine to guide you um So that's really something that I just wanted to promote, especially in the beginning of quarantine. There was just so many things going on. Um, So that was an outlet for me. Um, And in addition to that, too, I just really wanted to get a little more hands on experience for what it's like to run a business. Um, So when it was time for me to apply to internships and stuff, I had a really dynamic background. Um, Yeah, I don't like really sitting on my hands as much as I say I do. I do want to. I love breaks and stuff, but um, I don't feel comfortable when I feel like I haven't done something or been productive. Um, so that's why I started it. Wow. And so what do y'all, what type of apparel do y'all have? I know I've seen some like sweatshirt yeah. type things. Is it only for young ladies? It is actually right yeah. now. Um, as you mentioned earlier, this is a one woman show. So <laughs> we oh, real limited with stuff um but yeah so I sell cozy sets so right now we have hoodie and sweat sets and they're made out of um high, uh, non-allergenic fleece because I got allergies so for anybody else I got allergies my fabric got you you're gonna be good and itch free um so that's what we have right now and I have like some short sets um that are made out of terry cloth which is like a lighter fabric um yeah so that's what I sell just to keep you warm and cozy like you were mentioning about sweatpants people are in dire need of sweats right now so i got all your sweat needs if you want to check me out or i guess maybe not yeah. you oh, man but it's all right it's all right it's cool i can buy it for for mama auntie sisters whatever you know so <laughs> yeah, it's cool um but i'm gonna need you in a couple years if you want me to continue to support you i'm gonna need you to branch out and do men's department so next oh. all right cool that's your next assignment yeah you all right cool cool legit <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I love her. Uh, so yeah, now that you have this thriving business, you know, you have a lot of options because you know this is a multi-million dollar business already. So tell me what's coming next when you graduate. I, I'm speaking it. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Yeah. Don't be don't be Sarah. Don't laugh. I'm laugh. I'm I'm not even joking right now. So when you graduate, what are your next steps? I know you're gonna continue with the business, but what else? Yes. Um, so I guess if, as far as yellow design, people always ask me to like, what am I going to do with it? And I just really go with the flow with how I'm feeling. Um, like I said, I'm pretty like focused on positivity, engaging my mental health. So until yellow the sun becomes too much for me, I'll just keep continuing it as long as the funds allow, because you know, it's hard out here in these cold streets. But um, I, as far as like where I'm going to travel, I would love to go to Paris once we graduate for a few months and see what it's like. That's a plan of mine, of course. Um, things can change at any moment and I have to go with the flow. But um, I that is a plan that I have. I would love to work for Chanel. Look, Virgie, if you're looking at this, I would love to work for you. Um, <laughs> I that is definitely something that I'm drawn to and a lot of luxury brands are based in Europe um, but I know that right now a realistic solution that I would have would be working for American Eagle um, that's an internship that I have this summer and they do offer a lot of jobs to their um, yeah to their summer interns so that was something they proposed to me as a possibility so hopefully I don't embarrass myself um, and I <laughs> have an amazing summer which I think I will because I'm so thrilled to work for them shout out to American Eagle um, so I that's my my immediate plan my dream plan would be to work for a luxury brand <laughs> uh, between uh between old navy uh hollister and american eagle that that's been that was my teenage years and okay let me quit fronting i'm 20 and i still wear all those clothes so uh, so <laughs> that's okay that's why i laughed <laughs> yes uh this shirt i got uh, so yeah i i still avail myself to those uh stores listen you are just absolutely amazing thank you for bringing your radiance on my show today. Uh, okay, so if you have any questions for me, I, I've never flipped it before like this. Do you have a question that you would like? Because I noticed even at the beginning, you know, y'all, she flipped it at the beginning and started asking me questions at the beginning, if y'all didn't notice. I, I don't know if y'all caught that. So do you have a question for me? Anything you like? I actually did have a question for you as I was thinking, preparing for this, but how, um, when you get prepared to do these interviews and stuff, like how do you prepare to sit down? Because I noticed your, um, your interviews are always so like professional. I feel like you do them and guide them really well. So how do you prepare for them? Oh, great question, Alina. Uh, how do I prepare? Well, the good thing is normally, like with you, for example, or most of my other guests, I've been watching you for a while, right? So I <laughs> normally, so the things that, uh, you know, that I know I want to ask you about, I sort of already have that ready and together. Uh, the more that I've done this, the less, like when I started out, I used to send all my questions to the person like three days in advance and just be, you know, now I know that I know how I can lead the conversation. Usually um, I put it in order of, you know, maybe, thinking broadly and then zooming in on the person. That's how I think about preparing for interviews. Usually I do try to make it as organic as possible though, at least the flow, uh, yeah. but also keep it directed where I get the answers that people wanna know. People wanna know about certain things about you. And I hope today through the day's episode, they got it. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'll just get on my mic when I'm not here, I'm not crazy or anything, but I'll be like, I just practice my little, you know, radio. What's up, everybody? You know, I do that to myself too. Uh, you know, work on it. if I'm working on a new intro or, uh, you know, maybe get my mom to hear it or something like that. You know, so she can, you know, judge or that type of thing. But yeah, yeah. so that's that's sort of how I prepare. Your intro is solid. I wanted to like cheer for you the whole way through. I was like, you better say all that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming. Any any closing words you have? Um, no, thank you so much for having me. Like I was telling earlier, I was so excited when you asked me to appear on the show. You just do such a wonderful job and I feel like special people appear on your show. So I'm so happy to be here. Thank you again. No, listen, y'all. Y'all been asking for Lena Reed for a while. So here she is. 
Uh, of course, she was also, if y'all go watch that Black Women's History Month video, she was also in there giving us, again, just rays of shun- sunshine. Wow. <laughs> so um, thank you again. And thank you to all the people for tuning in today uh, to see what more new and upcoming episodes of Black Voices on the Hill. Again, for other Cornell and the news, follow Black Voice on the Hill on Instagram. Follow WVBR FM News on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Visit us at our website, wvbr.com slash Black Voices. You should can subscribe to our channel. Listen, I want to see some subscriptions this week. I want that, that email to be really booming up. Listen, we have a new email, uh, uh, bvh at wvbr.com. You can send us um, some mail. Tell us how you're liking this show. Uh, and you can also uh, tell us who you want to see next. Uh, sometimes... It's good to have those input from the community about who you want to see next. You can tune in right here on WVBR 93.5 every every Friday at 2 p.m. And the podcast releases the following Tuesday at 11 a.m. on YouTube and on all podcast platforms. We'll see you next week. Y'all be unapologetically black. My people, shout out to my producers, Mike Seitz, Grace Fairchild, and Lauren Thomas, who does my tracks. Peace out, everybody.